Good Sunday afternoon, everybody. Come on in. It's time to cook Sunday dinner. I am cooking a meatloaf, as you can see. Of course, you know I use ground turkey. And we're going to have some Vidalia chicken. I'm going to be using a rotisserie chicken to make my Vidalia chicken. So I'm going to have a couple of meats, and then I'm going to do some kale. have not cooked kale in a while. So we're doing kale today and some rice. This is uh, just a big old bag of kale that I buy from Food Line. I think this, each bag is a pound, so it makes a pretty good amount. Because you know, kale virtually doesn't weigh anything. So anywho, y'all, we're gonna get on with this meatloaf. I've already chopped my peppers, my onions, and my celery, got it ready, <coughs> excuse me. Got it ready to go into the meatloaf. Um, let me get me a good mixing spoon here. Of course, I'm gonna get my hands in it here shortly. Okay, so I got uh, some red onions. I got the confetti, uh, none hot peppers, and I've got some celery somewhere down the bottom of that bowl. So what I did was just chop it up real good. Let me get this, let me adjust. Okay, I had to adjust my camera there a little bit okay so here we are back we're getting ready now this is uh two pounds of uh ground turkey and this is one medium red onion four of those little confetti uh cut the different color of uh, sweet peppers and uh, a couple of stalks of celery so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and drop everything in all those little veggies into that ground turkey Okay, hey, got that going on. And of course, we're gonna get ready to start putting in our other ingredients, which include a couple of tablespoons of my everything but the kitchen sink seasoning. Just gonna sprinkle in. I got everything, every seasoning that I got in my cabinet is in here. Well, I think we've gone over that recipe many times. It's onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper, a little bit of salt. I've got a little bit of Tabitha's sunshine seasoning in there. No salt at all in there, uh, but it's really nice and flavorful. Um, I'm gonna put in some extra. Oh, I've gotta put my black pepper. That's what I have to sprinkle. Don't have my black pepper in like I was. So we'll put about a teaspoon of black pepper in there, okay? And we'll go on this side, and we're gonna grab uh, another teaspoon of uh, onion powder. We already got it in there every time we see but I need a little bit extra, about a teaspoon extra of that to add that flavor in. And you know, um, turkey meat tastes pretty good. It has a pretty good flavor, natural flavor. And we're going to put us a teaspoon more of garlic powder in there, okay? Well, I put that much to answer your question. I can hear that question. Why should you put so much seasoning? because I'm not using a lot of salt, so these, the onion powder, garlic powder, all that has no salt at all, none. Okay, so that's one reason why, but not the main reason why. Now, the main reason why, when I'm putting seasoning, I didn't hear the ancestors. I don't stop until the ancestors say, Peggy, with a Y, stop it. I didn't hear it, so whenever I hear it, I'll do it. I'm going to put us a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in there. That, that'll give it a little bit of a kick. So those are just the extra seasons. I want it more than what I've got in my everything but the kitchen sink. So those particular seasons, I just go ahead and put extra. It doesn't do anything but make it taste better. And it'll help you to miss out on wanting that salty flavor in there, okay? So, I'm going to put that to the side because I will be using ooh, onion and garlic powder again when I get ready to cook my uh, kale. Okay, so now we're going to put us uh, about a three-fourths of a cup of, these are breadcrumbs. This is to help to hold that meatloaf together. About three-fourths of a cup. We don't want it too breadcrumby. Okay. And I'm going to put a uh, I got two separate, um, the, the lifted onion soup mix, I had a little 
left in each packet. I was trying to put a whole pack. Let me see. If if you have a whole pack, go ahead and put your whole pack. This is just this is gonna amount to a one whole package. I had two, yeah, two open that I had used. So, okay, so that's that. Then we're gonna put us a tablespoon of you guessed it, soy salt, soy sauce, a tablespoon of soy sauce, and I'm gonna drop an egg in there, and we're gonna be ready to mix this meatloaf and put it in a pan. Oh, don't let me forget my oil because you know we're using um, turkey meat. So turkey meat is sort of dry, so we're gonna put some olive oil in there to loosen it up a little bit. So hang on, I'll be right back. So actually, I want to. I've got some smart start, uh, smart. I always say smart, smart balance. So I'm gonna put about a half a cup of that in there. That'll help to loosen it up. Okay. Then I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil. We're actually truffle oil. I'm getting my oils confused today, so I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of truffle oil in there. This is my truffle oil. I use it sparingly. Tanya told me yesterday that they now have truffle oil in Food Lion. The real truffle oil, the truff, I, that's good. I don't have to wait on uh, ordering it and, and wondering if it's going to ever get here. So that's very good for me. So we got truffle oil now in food line I'm told I haven't seen it but I'm gonna go ahead and set my oven up on 375 and we're gonna get um, I gotta put some uh, ketchup in there okay I'm gonna get my eggs out to go in there these are my nice uh, fresh farm fresh eggs about a fourth cup of uh, Ketchup goes in there. Only a fourth of a cup, y'all. Only a fourth of a cup. I'm going to drop me a... I want y'all to look at these eggs. I think I... I don't know if I showed y'all, but look at my eggs. Look at them little blue ones. These are fresh out of the hen house. Look at those little ones. Aren't oh, they cute? Aren't oh, they cute? And then I got... Look at that great big one. I just want y'all to see this. This, is, this stuff here just fascinates me. I can't make this stuff up. Look at that. Fresh eggs. Now that egg, I will be eating it. I'm going to use these smaller ones in this, in this uh, meatloaf. One. You know this meatloaf will be good. And a two. Make sure you get all your ingredients in here. And I'm going to go ahead and get me a glove. And we're going to get it mixed up. And we'll have it in the oven in the next 10 minutes. Okay, now all we got left to do, everything is in the meatloaf uh, mixture. There's the two, I think it's two and a fourth, two and a half pounds of, of uh, ground turkey, a medium red onion, um, bell pepper i'm sorry celery and those are uh, four five of those little um different colors they're like the two about two inches some orange green and yellow peppers and of course all of my uh everything but the kitchen sink two tablespoonful two eggs uh half a cup of bread crumbs uh a tablespoon of onion powder, garlic powder, a teaspoon of uh, black pepper. And what we're going to do is just mix all of this up together, get it in our pan and get it into the oven. Then I will make a um, tomato based gravy to go over. We'll put that on once it gets done, y'all. And all it is going to be is just a can of tomatoes, kind of diced or whatever kind of tomatoes you have. Or you can, if you got some fresh tomatoes in your refrigerator, just make yourself some uh, tomato gravy to go with this meatloaf. And we're going to serve it, of course, with along with that Bedelia chicken, the kale, and um, some rice. And I'm going to make some cornbread. 
make a little pan of cornbread to go with this because we got the kale. Okay. Now we're going to get the hand in here and get this meatloaf mixed up. You know, it's just a simple matter of getting a hand. I'm, I'm glue, I only glue one hand. Simply because I got all this on this thing, going all that on my hand. And then, okay. This is gonna be good. It smells so good, y'all. Mm mm good. And you know, I told y'all when we were doing meatballs and spaghetti and um, meatloaf and all like that, I try to go ahead and stick me a little piece of this mixture in the microwave to make sure all my seasonings are right. So next time y'all see this little darling, it's gonna be ready to eat with the sauce. I'll come back and show y'all how to do the sauce, which is just, like I said, a can of tomatoes, uh, fourth a cup of ketchup, a little brown sugar, and then a little bit of a seasoning out of that everything with the kitchen sink. Just make sure you mix this up really, really good now so it's nice and firm. So we'll see you on the flip side. Hey, y'all, I'm back. I almost uh, got going and left y'all. Okay, this is a rotisserie chicken, and what I'm doing is just cutting it up. I said I was going to make a uh, Vidalia. Surprise, surprise, I didn't have my ingredients for the Vidalia onion chicken. I thought I had some Vidalia onion chicken sauce, but I didn't have it. So I'm not, as I'm cutting, I'm thinking, am I going to do a honey mustard or lemon pepper, barbecue, some sort of thinking. So I'm getting my chicken cut. Okay, you know, you cut the chicken in the joint and it cuts better. I got the breast already cut up in there. And we just put on, all I gotta do with this chicken is just get it cut up. And you choose a sauce that you're gonna put on it. And again, we buy our chickens, our rotisserie chickens come from Sam's Club. And they have excellent, excellent rotisserie chicken. Just be careful with your finger so we don't cut nothing. Okay, so, got that. Just go between those joints and it cuts right into. Okay. And now we're gonna get this breast. These breasts are so huge. I always try to cut them. I make two cuts on the breast. That's the part with the wing on it. Get that in there. And then that's the other, the end part. We'll just leave that. we leave all of that, honey. There's some, some bones in that. So we leave the bones. Somebody likes to suck on the bone. Somebody like me. <laughs> so we got a nice pan full of um, chicken to get into the oven. Let's get this out of the way. And as I said, I'm just going to have to get my head together. As to what sauce I want to put, but that's what you do. You just cut that chicken up into pieces. Decide if you're gonna put uh, whatever sauce you make up something out of your head. So I, it might be even teriyaki. We've been on this teriyaki chicken kit, so it might be teriyaki chicken. It might be honey mustard or lemon pepper. Whatever I can whip up right quick and get this in the oven. Now, once I get the sauce ready and drench this chicken really, really good, we're going to. Um, Put it into the oven for about 30 minutes because remember you're not cooking this you're just heating it so that salt whatever sauce you put on it will be um inside there and get seasoned up real good so i'll let you know what i come up with hey y'all it's time to get these kale greens going i've got some sliced onions in my pan i'm going to need some um everything but the kitchen sink y'all know that y'all know that some onion powder just a touch of garlic powder. I'm gonna put some turmeric in there. Got my turmeric. I have to put a little bit of extra of that in. Um, a sprinkle, <coughs> excuse me, of lemon pepper, you know, goes well with um, kale, okay? So we're gonna fire that heat back up on that uh, on these onions and let them finish. They're sort of translucent now. I don't wanna cook too too much but enough to pull that flavor up to the top <coughs> excuse me using all these spices over here y'all know what happens if you see your news by the way i hope you all are having a god bless 
Sunday afternoon that the weather is beautiful and that you enjoy. It is so pretty outside. If I didn't know better, I would be thinking it was springtime. But the weather certainly feels like springtime. My heater is not running. I noticed that, so that's a good sign. Okay, so I'm just going to give these onions a stir. So like I said, I've got two pounds of uh, kale. It's going to make us a nice pot. And I'll probably transfer them. I'll have to cook them in this big pot to get started, y'all. Okay, so we're going to start them out like this. Almost as if you're going to saute them. And then what I'm going to do is I'll pour some water and a little bit of uh, chicken bouillon seasoning in there to get them going. Okay. You know, every time I cook uh, certain things, it seems like I have a different way to cook. Now I could have boiled some cooking meat and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not doing that. But I haven't got some bacon I need to do, some turkey bacon. Nobody around here eats turkey bacon pretty much but me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting my greens in, get them in the bottom of that pan. Y'all know I got some olive oil down in there. I'm going to put in some more olive oil just to get them going. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to stir them so that uh, nothing sticks to the pan, nothing starts to get any darker than what it's in it. These things don't have too many stalks and stems in them. Usually they have a lot of them little stubbies in there. I'm going to keep these going. Keep them going. Put a little bit more seasoning on top of that. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what my why my camera's jumping back and forth. But it did. Yeah, I have a teaspoon of that uh, lemon pepper seasoning. Okay, we're gonna come over here and pour some water in now. Trying to get a little water in the bottom of the pan because I got the sauteing process going pretty good. Now I can turn my heat all the way back up. Get them boiling and cover them and let them go ahead and cook. This is going to take a good hour, hour and 15 minutes to cook. So, but this is what I want to do to get my flavor started. Put the rest of I got another, about another half a bag of um, kale to put in there. So we're just going to let that steam away a little bit until we get the rest of the kale ready. Okay, I think we got everything boiled. See how they've cooked down tremendously. And this is that... Um, turkey bacon that I'm dropping in there for seasoning. About a half a pound to that two pounds of uh, seasoning mix. And then I'm going to, I got one more thing I'm going to put in. Need a little bit more water. And I'm going to put some, uh, the last of my chicken bouillon seasoning. So, what I'm going to do, y'all, I'll take the container that this chicken, this is chicken bouillon season that I use. It's about gone. There's probably just enough in there to season these uh, greens with. So I just put some water in there, shake it around, and get all that goodie out of the bag, out of the box, rather. And then I'm just going to cover these and let them cook about an hour and they should be done. Maybe 45 minutes. They've already cooked about 10, 12 minutes, I believe. I'm gonna add me a little bit of black pepper to that mix. A little bit of black pepper. And when you see these again, I, I'm, I, I'm going to put them in another pot. I'm going to put this big old pot away. But you, you have, if you're going to cook two pounds, you have to have a pretty good sized pot to get them in there. But you see how they shrink once they all get cooked down. 
That's a nice size pot. That'll serve six or eight people. Six or eight of my people. Ah, yes, indeed, they will. Okay, so we shall return. Okay, y'all, I'm going to make just a small pan of cornbread. This is just one cup of meal, one egg, one fourth of a cup of, um, or two cup of tablespoons of brown sugar, and a fourth cup of milk, and some, uh, about fourth cup of cooking oil. Mixing it all up together. This is real simple, y'all. And you know what? Cornbread, this is whatever. You can make that just by whatever it tells you on the side of the packaging. So this is made, all that's mixed in together. Get my other little cup of tea, yes. What is that? Cornbread. Cornbread? Mm -hmm. What is that y'all so tickle about downstairs, please? Uh, they get memes, memes, whatever. Memes? Oh, yeah. Y'all doing memes, okay. Well, somebody was asking me the other day, why did I like a smooth top stove so much? So because I can use it uh, <clears throat> just like I use a countertop. At least mine, I can. I mean, I've always used mine. This is always because I have such a limited counter space. I use just like just like this. I got stuff cooking here, but I can still use this little bit of space right there. So it's it's not only thirty one inches, but I know how to utilize that space and maximize it. So I love it. Yeah, those big pretty gas ranges, they are gorgeous. I don't like using gas heat to cook. I love this electric heat. I love, love, love it. And then I love the way I can clean my uh, stove top so easily. So I love it. And like I said, it doubles as a counter when I'm cooking or when I'm not cooking. And that glass on there is durable. This stove is like 20 something years old and it's still doing really, really well. It's a G profile. When they made these stoves, they made the, the, that whole profile line. I don't know how good it is now. I'm hoping it's even better. Um, I don't know how much use I'm going to get out of this stove, but I'm hoping it'll last until I decide not to cook no more. How about that? Yes, indeed. So anyway, this cornbread is ready. This little uh, <coughs> cake is about 8 by 8 pan or 7 by 8 or something like that. It's a small pan relatively small and we're just going to pour that mixture in it's going to my 375 degree oven for about a good 20 minutes and we have us a nice little pan of cornbread to eat along with the meal so that's one of those little get on out of the way things okay we'll be back okay i'm mixing up a little bit of tomato gravy look i was going to use a can of rotel mild that stuff is so hot i can't use that stuff i had to just put about a couple of tablespoons i like the way it tastes but that the heat in it i can't do it so i have to put about a couple of tablespoons you can use a whole can if you can take the heat or uh, this is a cup of tomato ketchup oh that thing hot and a couple of tablespoons of that lifted onion soup mix and i'm gonna put a, a tablespoon this stuff still got me going I, I'm telling when I tell y'all, I cannot do the hot stuff. I can't do the hot stuff, y'all. I cannot. Whew, child, please. So I'm going to put this brown sugar. It will cut some of the heat out of there. I already know that. And I'm going to go ahead and sneak around here and put me some of this Budweiser bowl marinade. They had it on special at Sam's Club, so I'm going to put me a little bit of that in there. It has, and it's bold, it's bold. So you have to calm it down a little bit, but it's pretty good, it's not bad. It's pretty good. So we're gonna mix that all in there. But I like those chunks of tomatoes in there. I was gonna use some diced tomatoes. I guess I didn't have any, because I sure didn't see any in my cupboard, as the kids can say. What you got in the cupboard? We can snack on, Grandma. But anyway, I'm mixing all this together. This is gonna be my tomato gravy you know we need a little bit to, uh, to go over that meatloaf and of course a little bit to drizzle over your rice I'm gonna set that meatloaf right on top of that rice y'all I'm gonna have to calm it down a little bit more because you know what the um, that Budweiser sauce marinade is ready 
it's ready for the world, y'all. Ready for the world. So we're just going to mix that up. But ordinarily, tomato sauce, tomato ketchup, some diced tomatoes, whatever you choose to put. Some people put a brown gravy on their meatloaf. The mainstay here is the meatloaf. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all got the uh, meat sauce over. The meat sauce poured over that meatloaf. We're going to run it back in there for about 15 to 20 more minutes. And it's going to be ready. Just give it a chance to cook through the meatloaf. You can score your meatloaf if you want to to make sure it gets in there. However you want to do it. So, we will return. Okay, y'all, I'm back. I'm trying some new rice. It's called Lundberg Family Farms Sustainable Wild Blend Gourmet Rice. So, first time I've tried it, Sam's Club. It's a four-pound bag, and we're going to see how it works today because I really want to use it in one of my recipes for my parties. It seems like I can't even test. It has about four different kinds of rice in there. So we're gonna try it out today and see how it works out. So it's all it's always one to two ratio um, pretty much when you're cooking rice. So that's what we're doing. We got two cups, four cups of water. That's two cups of the rice. And it calls for some butter and or oil. You know I'm gonna put both. I'm gonna put a, a tablespoon of oil in there and then I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in there. I have no clue what this rice is going to taste like, but we're keeping our fingers, toes, and everything crossed. That's going to taste pretty good. Now it also says you can put in, let's see, it says to put in, um, you can use chicken broth, water or broth. So I put water, and I'm going to add some of that uh, chicken bouillon uh, seasoning to it to season it up so that lets you know you need to put some seasoning in it. All they had to do was say it to me one time. I didn't have broth, chicken broth, so I am going to use, since we're doing meatloaf today, I'm going to put the equivalent of uh, a cup of uh, beef broth in there, okay? Oh, it's dark. The water's dark, y'all. We'll see. We're going to see what's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and season it up pretty good. Because I do season rice, y'all know, all the time. I'm going to put me a teaspoon of onion powder. And, of course, a teaspoon of garlic powder in there. There's my onion, there's my garlic. Then I'm going to put just a little bit of my everything but the kitchen sink in there. Maybe a half a teaspoon. Then I'm going to go and I'm going to get me a little bit of butter and put it in there. And I'm just going to put the lid on and cook. Now, one thing too I noticed with it, you got to cook it for 45 minutes. I don't know what's up with the long cooking. Maybe some of the rice is very... Uh, hard to cook. I don't know. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat down and put the lid on it just like you do regular rice. And I'm going to let it cook for that 45 minutes. So, let's see. Um, this will be 45. I'm going to go ahead and set it by my oven. And then I'll just, when I hear it ring, I'll know it's time to turn it off. I'm still going to put some a little bit of butter in, but I'm going to wait till the end to put that butter in. And I'm going to let you know how this rice turns out because I've never used it, never seen it in the store before. So uh, we're hoping it turns out pretty good. So see you shortly. Okay, y'all, we are ready to put the <clears throat> lemon butter sauce on this chicken. I decided on some lemon butter sauce. So you can just up use some um, either lemon juice or a fresh lemon, half a lemon, um, half a stick of butter, half a teaspoon of onion powder, garlic powder, and then just, just I melt it mine down all together. That's the lemon pepper, you have to put some, a little bit of lemon pepper in there and just melt it down. If you do the lemon pepper, you really don't need the lemon juice. I use lemon pepper and about a, um, four or five, about, wow, that's hot y'all. About a fourth of a cup of uh, water. And all I'm going to do is just spoon this over 
this chicken. And then we're going to run it in the oven for a little bit. Just let it heat. Remember, it's already cooked now. You don't have to cook it. You just allow it to heat all the way through. Okay? And then you got to stir some good old uh, lemon butter chicken. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to put all of every bit of it in there. In the oven for about 20, 30 minutes is how long it's going to take for it to get heated through. Okay, y'all, dinner is done. There's that uh, gourmet wild rice. Good old savory meatloaf. And I did the lemon butter chicken, cornbread, and kale. It's all ready. We're getting ready to sit back, relax, and enjoy this meal. Thank y'all for stopping by. Thank you for your prayers, your comments, your comments, and your well wishes. And remember to continue to pray without ceasing and do something kind for somebody. Okay, I told y'all I was going to give y'all the thumbs up or down on this rice. This gourmet rice, thumbs down. I don't like, it tastes like brown rice, and I don't like brown rice. So, you can try it at your own behest. So, I will find someone that likes brown rice because I don't like to waste. So, now, uh, I don't know about this rice. Somebody else here today might like it, but I just don't care for that husky type rice. Anywho, y'all, thank y'all for stopping by. Pray without ceasing. Now, do something kind for somebody and get in that kitchen and cook yourself something good to eat. Toodles.